G'day all and welcome back to Unimig. Today I'm going to show you step by step on how to build this exact little mini offset smoker right in front of me. This little machine's perfect if you live in an apartment or have limitations on outdoor space but you still want that smoky flavour in your food. This little project will improve your fabrication, cutting and welding skills and also give you a final outcome of an offset smoker that you can show off to your friends and family. Anyway, let's put a sock in it and get started. The narrow way is not the narrow mind the narrow mind feels safer locked inside Seeing colors that I've never seen Yeah, black and white feels us of certainty Good. For this project, you're going to need some materials such as mild steel, square hollow section, round bar and hinges, as well as some other scrap metal. Also, you'll need a welder. I'll be using a TIG, but you can use either a MIG or a stick. I'll be using a plasma cutter as well, and some hand and rotary tools. We'll have a full list on everything you need in the description on how to make this project. So now it's time to run you through step by step on the whole process. Firstly, we'll start by measuring and cutting the main body and firebox of the smoker. Our smoker body will be 410 millimeters long, 150 millimeters high, and 150 millimeters wide. Repeating this process three more times, resulting in four matching sections. For the ends of the body, you'll need to cut out 250 millimeter by 150 millimeter squares, which will be further worked on to accommodate the chimney and the firebox intake. The lugs that will hold the cooking grate up will now need to be cut out. Measuring 20mm by 25mm rectangles, cut out four all up. The firebox will have two different lengths starting with three 120mm by 130mm pieces for the walls and two 120mm by 120mm squares for the top and base, making five pieces in total. Using the two 150mm by 150mm ends of the smoker body, it's time to measure out the chimney and the firebox intake. Starting with the firebox, mark the middle of the plate. Then using your combination square, draw a line 12 millimeters from the edge and another line 62 millimeters from the same edge. Now mark out 30 millimetres on each side of the centre line, creating a 60 millimetre by 50 millimetre rectangle hole to be cut out. Now for the chimney. Mark the centre of the plate again, Measure up 12 millimetres from the edge and then 37 millimetres from the same edge. Now mark 12.5 millimetres of each side of the centre line. This will give you 25mm by 25mm hole to be cut out. Now it's time to cut these holes out. Starting by centre punching each corner of the holes you just marked out and drilling with a 6mm drill bit. We do this as it makes for easier ignition and the round corner when we plasma cut the holes. Now that your holes are drilled, it's time to cut out these sections using a plasma cutter. 
we'll be using the Viper Cut 30, making sure to use a straight edge to get a nice clean cut. As always, clean your cuts up with a flap disc using a grinder. For internal cuts where the flap disc won't fit, use a file to deburr the edges. It's time to assemble the smoker body starting with the lugs. Measuring on two of the four main horizontal body sections, come up 40mm from the bottom and 30mm from the ends. Next, squaring and tacking them into place. It should now look like this. The body of the smoker now needs to be tacked together using our right angle magnets to keep them in place. Making sure to square them up every time. You should now have a body that looks like this. It's time to attach both ends of the smoker body making sure that the smaller chimney hole is at the top of the body and the bigger firebox intake is at the bottom of the body. The body of your smoker should now be fully tacked together apart from the lid. This step is going to be the most complicated of the lot as we'll be measuring and cutting out the firebox door sections. Starting with the door frame, follow this guide to get your measurements and proceed by center punching the corners of the lines and drill with a five millimeter drill bit. This section will now need to be cut out using your plasma cutter and cleaned up with a flap disc and a file. You should end up with a section like this. Following this next two part section, you will need to cut out the firebox door, making sure to sand it back. Now that this section is cut out, it's time to redraw a smaller hole following this guide. This will be where your door will intake oxygen. Using a center punch, again on the corners, drill and cut out the intended section, filing off all the burrs and edges. You should now have a section that looks like this. For the final part of the firebox door, you'll need to cut out the oxygen intake cover again following these measurements, making sure to sand it back. You should now have a section that looks like this. To refresh, you should now have three sections, a door frame, a firebox door and an oxygen intake cover. Now that all of your firebox sections are cut out, it's time to assemble the oxygen intake. Firstly, we found a quick scrap piece of mesh to take into place at the back of the intake for a cool look. Taking both the small vent latch cover and the oxygen intake door, centre punch the top left corner of the vent latch and again just above the top left hand of the oxygen intake, making sure they line up and the door fully covers the intake. Now, drill a 3mm hole in both, attaching these sections with a bolt and tightening with a screw. You should now have a working movable oxygen intake door. With the door now attached, it's time to make some skirting to seal and retain heat. Starting with cutting two pieces at 82 by 10 millimeters, making a 45 degree angle on one side of each. And finally, one 97 by 10 millimeter piece, making a 45 degree angle on both sides. Organize these pieces using clamps on top of the oxygen intake so they overlap a couple of millimetres and tack them into place. Making sure to sand them back to give a flush appearance. We'll now make a little handle for this door. Using some scrap, we'll cut a small tab and round it off on one end. 
bending it using a hammer and finally welding it into place, situated in the middle of the oxygen intake door. Using one of our three hinges, place it in the middle of the firebox door and the door frame, clamping it into place and welding it on. The firebox door will need a locking mechanism to keep it closed. Using this drawing as a guide, cut out a locking lever. Round one of the ends off and centre punch this as well as the middle of the skirting. Drilling both ends with a 3mm drill bit and screwing them together. You should now have a firebox door that looks like this. We will now tack the firebox together, making sure to have both the 120 by 120 millimeter on top and bottom and the firebox door on the opposite side of the smoker body. The second part of the firebox locking mechanism is ready to be attached cutting out as shown using a grinder. Now weld it to the door so the slot and lever meet easily. Finally, using some 6mm round bar or any other scrap, cut a small piece that can attach to the end of the tab to act as a handle. It's time to attach both the firebox and the smoker body together, tacking into place so that it correlates with the firebox intake. As you might have noticed, there is a rectangular hole on the back of the firebox. The easiest way to fill this is to use some of your 3mm mild steel and trace around the area. Now cut it out and tack it into place. Moving on to one of the most important parts of this build, the chimney. Using some 30 by 30 by 2 mm square hollow section, create a 45 degree angle at the end and mark in 40 mm from the edge. This will be the horizontal section of the chimney. Now cut it out using your grinder and sand it back. Moving on to the vertical section, start with the same 45 degree angle at the end of the SHS and mark 100 millimetres in from the edge. Again cut and sand back. We also sanded off the blue primer to keep the raw metal theme. The next step is to weld together the chimney. For the millionth time, use the right angle magnets to hold both pieces flush against each other, creating a right angle. Now tack them fully well together, the two pieces making sure to square it up. After sanding back those welds, it's time to tack and weld it onto the smoker body, making sure it fully covers the chimney hole. We now have our smoker body, firebox and chimney all tacked together. So now the fun begins. It's time to fully weld it all together, making sure you stagger your welds so it doesn't pull out of shape. After all this is done, make sure to thoroughly clean with a flap disc so it's free of burrs. To start off the grill, we'll use our 5mm plate, marking out 360mm in length and 130mm in width. After cutting this section out with our Viper Cut 30, it's time to set a border 20mm from all edges. 
This gives us our perimeter for which the grill is going to sit inside. Proceed to mark out the centre line of this section. And again, mark the centre between the other two smaller sections just created. This is where our slots will be cut. With the grate measured out, it's time to centre punch where all the longitude lines meet the latitude lines, assisting in the drilling process. We will pile the drill using a 5mm drill bit and move up to a 10mm drill bit, creating nice rounded edges to our grill slots. Afterwards, we'll cut out these sections using our plasma cutter. This is vital to clean this section, starting with a flap disc for the exterior and the file for the interior slots where the flap disc can't reach. It should now fit nicely inside the smoker body with a big enough gap for the smoke to circulate. The legs of the smoker are the next step. Using the 30 by 30 by 2 mm SHS, we'll cut two pieces at 130 mm with a 45 degree angle on one side. Two more pieces at 125 mm, also with a 45 degree angle on one side. And finally, two 150 mm pieces, cutting both ends with a 45 degree angle. You should end up with pieces that look like this. Starting with welding the legs together. Take your before mentioned right angle magnets and tack and fully weld them together. Making sure the 130mm and 125mm lengths don't get mixed up. After sanding them back, it's time to attach them to the body, taking the 130mm long legs and welding them flush against the firebox, as well as the 125mm long legs and weld them 30mm in from the opposite end. We do this to create a slight fall off so the drippings stay out of the firebox. You should now have a recognisable mini offset smoker with only the lid and some extras to go. Attaching the lid is fairly easy. Using the other two hinges you have left, mark in 50mm from both ends, welding onto the lid and body, sanding them back for a refined finish. Similar to the firebox door, we need to make skirting for the lid so it retains heat and smoke. So using our angle, we'll cut out a piece at 410mm with a 45 degree angle on both sides and two 150mm sections with a 45 degree angle on opposite sides, making sure it fits up nicely. You should have three pieces that look like this. Now taking the chimney side of the angle, Mark and cut around the section so it fits around the chimney and goes over the body with no obstructions. With the three pieces now cut out, it's time to tack them onto the lid itself and fully weld together at the corners.
Sanding back these welds will give you a flush finish and more importantly, a working and sealing lid. Making this small chimney lid is quite fiddly. However, there are two main pieces. Using the two millimeter plate, measure out 30 by 30 millimeter square with a small 10 by 10 millimeter tab in the corner. as well as another 10 by 10 millimetre tab by itself. With the centre punch, mark the centre of both 10 by 10 millimetre tabs and using a 5 millimetre drill bit, create the holes that will be used to attach them. Now, cut out both pieces using a grinder, making sure to sand back the edges and the drill holes. Finally, weld a small tab onto the top left edge, sanding it back so it's flush with the top of the chimney. The assembly of this section can get a little frustrating, but using a 25 by 4 mil bolt, two small washers and a small spring, assemble as shown. The reason I'm using a spring is to keep pressure down on the lid so no smoke leaks out, as well as temperature control. You should now have a working movable lid. However, this lid now needs a handle. So using some scrap round bar, cut out a small piece and weld it to the opposite side of the hinge mechanism. Coming to the back end of the project, we need to make a handle for the smoker body lid. Using an offcut from some of your 3 mil plate, Cut out a piece around 180mm in length and 8mm in width. Marking and heating up 30mm from each end and bending it to a 90 degree angle. Now mark the centre of the lid and weld it into place. Your lid should now be fully assembled. On to the second last step, which in hindsight we should have done earlier, but nevertheless, we need to make some drainage holes for the drippings to fall out of. Start by marking the line 15mm in from the edge and drill a few holes evenly not forgetting to use a slightly bigger drill to remove the burrs. Now it's time to give your whole project a final sand, getting rid of all the sharp edges and burrs that may be left. For the 30th and final step of this slightly overcomplicated project, we need to burn off the whole smoker. We use an oxyacetylene set, but there are plenty of ways to do this. It's finally time to fire it up and start cooking on your brand new mini smoker that's super impractical but great fun to look at. Roll the montage. Try to catch me howling at the moon. It's actually pretty good. It's not bad for a um, no thermometer on the on the smoker. Yeah, that's another thing, eh? <laughs> it's got a nice peppery flavour to it. Probably because of the pepper on it. It's good. 
Thanks for watching this smoker build. The steak came out just how I like it. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to never miss a video. For now, we'll see you next time.